Hey everybody, welcome to another video by CigarFellows.com. My name is Moose, I'm going to be doing your video review today. And, and today, even though I am smoking a cigar, we're actually not even going to review a cigar. We're actually going to talk about something that I've been really interested in getting involved in more and more, and that's home brewing. So, we're going to actually do a whole video on basically start to finish from getting your kit to uh, sanitizing your equipment to boiling uh, your you know your beer and um, actually getting it ready to um, basically be drank um, in this case this is only the second time that I've ever home brewed so I really want to show everybody um, how simple it can be that it's it's not something that's very hard to do it's not something that um, you know you you can't do um, I mean if you can make a cake really you can make beer it's, it's really not that hard um, I picked up a um, a kit here at my local shop, Hopman's. Um, this is their triple chocolate oatmeal stout. Um, you know, it's about forty-five dollars, forty-six dollars, um, and basically everything that I need to, as far as ingredients go, are actually in this box. So, opening this box just to kind of show you guys how this will all usually come, um, and you can get these from your local place or or uh, even online places like that. Um, it will come with the recipe. It'll basically just show you all the different ingredients that are uh, part of your your uh, particular brew. Um, this is the uh, general brewing instructions, which really gives you just a, a real, basically a simple explanation of everything that's involved. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you have your kit is you're going to want to make sure that you can identify all the different ingredients and what you're looking to do. Um, this pack here is um, dry ale yeast. This is generally how your yeast will come. Uh, it's in some kind of um, steel packet. Um, this here is going to be my steeping grains. Um, and we'll talk more about what steeping is and, and what's involved in that. This is going to be my dry malt extract. It, um, it's about um, six pounds of uh, Mutton's Dark uh, Spry DME. Uh, you're going to get um, your hops pellets. This is um, the hops for your beer. You can see, I don't know if that will pick that up in the camera, but that's actually just little hop pellets inside of a, a little bag there. You are going to get some MAL to dextine. dextrine. This is going to be your four ounces. Uh, this is your corn sugar, and this is for priming beer. This is if you intend to bottle your beer. Um, most kits will actually come with bottle caps as well. Um, however, I like to keg, so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about those. Um, now, if you and the, you know if you guys want to use them, you know absolutely they do include them in most of your kits. And then you're also going to usually get a steeping bag, um, which is what you're going to put your um, your steeping grains in um, into your pot. So now that we have everything kind of laid out and we understand what everything is, it's always a good idea to kind of familiarize yourself with exactly how the process is going to take place. Um, it's going to talk about um, how to pour you know your three gallons of clean water into a four gallon or larger stainless steel pot. Um, I personally go to my local grocery store and I get the just or the drinking water. Um, I just find that even though I have decent tap water, I like my water to be a little cleaner. Um, a very important part of any brewing is going to be your sanitation. This is actually going to be my fermentation bucket. Um, I have followed the instructions for sanitation, which is, um, I use sand, uh, star sand, which is one ounce of star sand to five gallons of water. Um, basically, I filled this up with five gallons of water. Um, I have a uh, measuring cup, pour it in one ounce, put it in there, let it sit. Um, they say two minutes of contact, it's enough to clean it. But along with that, and one thing that I like to do when I started doing mine is, um, I like to sanitize all my stuff. Um, and a lot of places will tell you, um, this is one thing you want to um, be sure that you understand is, you don't want to scratch the inside of your bucket. So as I'm putting my scissors into this solution to sanitize, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm actually sticking my hand down in there and letting them flop to the bottom. Um, this is actually my bubbler that will go on top of my lid 
that will allow the gases to escape. I'm going to put that into the, my, my solution. And then I'm going to take the lid of my bucket, which has my spot for my bubbler, and I'm just going to slide it in sideways so that it's actually about halfway submerged into my water. Now one other thing that um, a lot of people tell you to do is to take your yeast because your yeast is going to come after your boil um, and after the boil is when your your beer is actually the most susceptible to getting bacteria growth. So I also take my yeast and I just set it in there. Obviously unopened, it's sealed, it's safe, it's just basically sanitizing the outside of the package itself so that when I do open it up there's no way that it's going to become contaminated and you know contaminate my beer. So while I've got this stuff uh, setting up what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to prepare for my boil and we'll be right back outside with our boil. So here we are we're, uh, we're outside we're, uh, we're ready to start boiling um, I do have my five gallon stainless steel pot here on top of my uh, turkey fryer. Um, I have my thermometer just to keep track of my temperatures inside um, and, and you'll see why I need that thermometer in a moment here but um, so the next step in this process is to actually steep which is the basically taking this um, this net and taking my my steeping grains and actually kind of using them like almost like a tea bag in the water to where I'm actually going to get the flavors from the grains into my my work eventually um, so just taking a standard knife um, just kind of cutting this open um, my trusty camera assistant found that it was pretty funny when I said teabagging so we'll acknowledge Dan for uh, his, uh, his teabagging uh, antics um, then at what point you can actually just take your your net and flip your grains over right inside of it. Now you will notice you'll see some of the the dust and the the, uh, the stuff from inside the bag actually kind of um, floating out, uh, which is which is normal. I mean you're going to get a little bit of that. Um, and one thing that I like to do is once I've actually got these in here, is I'll just tie one knot to keep them in the bag itself, and then from here. There's already three gallons of water in my pot. We're just going to set these into the pot. Now, it'll take them a second to absorb, but they will actually start to sink. And at which point, to keep this bag off the bottom of the pot, I'm actually going to tie the bag just with a loose knot right to the one of the handles. So it just kind of holds the pot right where it needs to be. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the fire started and we'll be right back with some more of this video here. So here we are. We have our, our flame going on our kettle. We have our grains in the pot to, um, to steep. And I have my thermometer. Now part of this is, is that with this, what I want to do, and per the instructions is, heat my water to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and then hold it at that temperature for approximately 30 minutes. Or actually, they say 30 minutes. So, what I'm going to do is, you know, I have my thermometer. I'm going to wait until my water hits 150 degrees. I can control my flame with my, with my regulator here. So I should be able to maintain right around 150 degrees. Once I hit that 150 degrees, I'm going to start the timer, 30 minutes. And after that 30 minutes, we'll come back and we'll talk to you a little bit more about homebrewing. So, uh, here we are. We've... Uh, We've got our, um, our pot, we've got 150 degrees, um, we're controlling the heat now with the regulator and uh, as you can see we have our steeping grains in here and we're actually turning it down a little bit more, we don't want it quite boiling um, and we're going to maintain this 150 degrees for the next 30 minutes uh, per the instructions. So turning it down just a little bit more without making it go off. And we're just going to maintain this, like I said, for the next 30 minutes. Uh, when the 30 minutes is up, we'll come back with some more of this video here on home brewing with uh, scrap bells. Okay, so uh, welcome back. So here we are. Uh, our uh, 
grains have been steeping for the last 30 minutes. We've maintained 150 degrees. Um, I now have the heat off just so I can you know, chat with you guys for a second. Um, this is basically the, the next step in this is to actually, you, you never want to squeeze this bag, but you do obviously have to dispose of it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to pick this up, let all the extra good chocolate and, and uh, oatmeal flavors go back into my, my beer itself. Well, my work. Let that drain for a second here. Every bit of that's yummy, yummy, yummy. Half tempted to squeeze the bag, but don't ever squeeze the bag. And then from there, just gonna stick it, just stick it in something to set aside. Um, now at this point, the instructions say that we should bring this back to a boil. So we'll go ahead and turn this burner back on. Scooch it aside so I can get a better look. And there we go, we have our heat back. So uh, we're gonna bring this to a boil. Right now, if you can see in here, you see what it kind of looks like. It's basically, uh, almost looks like a real dark coffee. Um, we're still at 150 degrees. So even though we had no flame, we're still maintaining the 150 degrees, so we're still safe. There's no bacteria issues or anything like that. Um, I am gonna crank my heat up though. I definitely wanna get this boiling uh, as quick as possible so we can start our next step. Um, I am gonna take my, my uh, stirring spoon, and this already has been sanitized, but I'm just gonna set it in here. It'll avoid uh, a future step. Because our next step, uh, per the instructions, is to actually add all of our malts and our hops. Uh, this is only a one part hop mix, so it's a 60 minute boil hop mix, as opposed to um, some of the other hops. Sometimes you um, put them in when there's only 30 minutes left in the boil or 15 minutes left. This one's actually the only pops pack that comes with it is a, a complete 60 minute pack. So it's going to be kind of easy to maintain just because. We've only got to add all these ingredients and then cook it for the next 60 minutes. So um, while I am waiting for this to come to a boil, um, I did download an app um, for my iPhone that um, is actually just a timer. So I can set this for one hour, zero minutes. And uh, once we add all this stuff, I'll start my timer and we're gonna, we're gonna make some great beer. Probably be a great time to edit out some of the stuff, but either way. Hey to all my brothers over at fail.com. Some people appreciate that, other people may not have a clue what I'm talking about, but so alright, so we we definitely have a boil going now. Um, if you want to bring the camera over, we can take a look inside here, kind of show you know what we're kind of looking for. You can see it's starting to really boil up. I'm going to let it go for just a little bit longer. I want to get more of a little bit more of a rapid boil going just to maintain that heat. All right, so now that we have a boil, what I'm going to do is instead of trying to just remove this, I'm going to actually just back my heat down, kind of scooch my pan over to the side so that I'm actually not really over the flame. Um, just makes it easier in the future when I go to relight. And um, we're gonna go ahead and take our six pounds of malt. And the key to this is, is that we want to stir this in uh, relatively uh, quickly. Uh, we don't want to give it time to, to actually clump up or anything like that. So we're going to maintain a stir as we're pouring this in. And we'll hope that we don't have a big boil over or anything like that. 
So obviously that would suck. Wouldn't make for much of a video. Oh, we're about to lose our thermometer. It's all right, we'll grab that. We'll take that off for right now. And at the same time, we're going to add our our other malt extract. With our dextrine, which sounds to me like it's sugar, probably is. And then last but not least, I'm gonna try to, uh, yeah, this is the nice part about having helping hands. If you can open it for me, there's a knife. Pull your teeth. And we're going to actually, you can see the hops pellets. We're going to add the hops pellets right into the mix. Now at this point, we definitely want to return this back to the heat. Get our thermometer back in there. And start our fire back up. As we do want this to, to start to boil. And um, for our instructions, add all of our stuff. Once boiling it, bitter hops, which we did. Be careful not to let the pot boil over, boil for 45 minutes. Stirring occasionally, and then add our final hops. However, because we don't have those final hops, we're actually just going to boil this for 60 minutes. So once we get a boil going, Now the important part in this step is definitely to keep your stir going. Um, obviously just like um, boiling stuff on your stove, you certainly don't want this to boil over. So we're going to have to, you know, once we get it boiling, we're going to have to keep an eye on it. I'm probably just going to go ahead and grab a chair that I happen to have handy nearby and uh, actually just sit here and consistently, you know, stir this until we get a good boil going. I almost want to try it as it sits. It just looks delicious. What? Battery's almost dead. Oh, the battery's almost dead? Yeah. Well, in that case, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut this short right here. And uh, we'll be back uh, as soon as uh, our 60 minutes is up. And we'll show you the next process in boiling beer. Or work. So here we are. We've actually got about another 30 minutes on our boil. We actually have somebody outside watching our pot um, just to make sure that it doesn't boil over. Um, however, what I want to do next is I want to start preparing for what's going to happen once our boil is complete. Part of that is, is if you look in this bucket, I have five gallons of water mixed with my, um, my uh, star sand. So all of this has been rotated around. This is my lid. Um, it's been rotated about two minutes on any con or surface contact. Is gonna do plenty. Um, bubbles, don't worry about them. They actually says it on the bottle. You talk to any of the the guys that uh, boil, and they tell you, you know what? It's not a big deal to have those bubbles on there. Um, this is my my bubbler, and one thing that you'll notice is is that um, it's actually got fluid in it, and I want that fluid to stay in it. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is stick it upside or through my little port here to kind of hold it. And the reason that I want the sand sizer in there is so that obviously air can't flow backwards into my fermenter once we start to actually ferment beer. So this is really like a one-way valve. Basically, as air comes up, um, it's kind of hard to see, but um, it'll actually push up on this little bubble on the inside, and it'll bubble up around the sides. Um, I have cleaned my hands as well. I did actually dunk them in the sanitizer. Um, 
The next thing that we're going to pull out is our yeast pack. And I'm just going to set it right there on top of my bucket. And then I'm going to reach in and I'm going to find my scissors. So my scissors are now completely sanitized. Um, all of this stuff is sanitized. And uh, what I'm going to do is just dump this sanitizer back into my sink. And, jeez, uh, five gallons of water, right? And uh, just uh, go ahead and put it down the drain. Any of the um, extra liquid that may be left in your bucket or bubbles, completely safe. You don't want to rinse after this. You just basically just take it, tip it, shake it. And uh, any of the bubbles or uh, the foam that's still left in there, perfectly fine. I'm just going to set that to the side. Um, I'm going to take my lid and just set it upside down on top of there just to kind of add that little bit of extra. Um, we're going to wait for our water to go down here. Um, for some reason I have a slow drain today. Um, and I am going to actually um, kind of just help it down a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to prepare this sink to actually cool my wort. Um, your wort is basically your beer before it ferments. So it's, it's, it's actually, it is your beer. Um, it just hasn't had time for the yeast to, uh, to take place, um, you know, and do its job to actually ferment the, the alcohol and bring in the alcohol. So I'm just going to rinse this down a little bit. Try to get rid of all the, the foam in there. Not that it's a big deal, it's just sanitizer. But I do want this to be cold water. So then I'm going to take my stopper. We're going to stop up this sink. I'm going to turn my faucet on. And I'm going to let this thing fill up for just a little bit. And basically the idea is, is that I want, you know, enough water in here that I can bring my boiling water in, in my pot, set it in here. I have ice in my freezer. We're going to pack it nice. And we're going to super cool this and drop it down to around 70 degrees so that it's safe to actually pour into my bucket and I can add my yeast at that point. I mean, obviously, if I took my yeast and tried to add it to boiling water, um, it's going to, first off, it's going to kill the yeast, um, at least most yeast. Um, so, you know, obviously we want to, to avoid killing our yeast and things like that. And we definitely don't want to melt our buckets either. So, I'm going to let this fill up. We're going to continue with that boil and we'll be back in just a little bit. More on this home. Alright, so here we are. We've uh, completed our boil. We have a sink full of cold water. We're going to set our wort right into the sink. And actually, what we want to do is to avoid bacteria, is close this off the best that we can to air. So I do want to leave my thermometer in there because I definitely want to tell how hot I'm still um, at inside. But I'm going to grab my ice out of my freezer to actually help to cool this water. Few on the floor, never heard that one. I have a dog for that. And as you can see, now I have a nice ice bath. A nice ice bath in my sink to actually cool my work. Uh, we're going to let this cool till it's about 70 degrees, like I said. Because then we're going to actually take the wort, we're going to put it into here, and then add our differences with our bottled water again. Um, as I said before, you know, I, I buy my water uh, just to give it the purest water that I can possibly get. So while we're waiting for this to cool, you guys go grab a beer. We're going to grab a beer, and we'll be back. Here we are. We're at about 70 degrees in our, in our pot. We still have a little bit of steam coming off. That's, that's not uncommon. Um, it's been in our water. It's completely melted all the ice. Um, at the end, I mean, I can still grab the pot from the sides. Um, that's a good way to tell. I mean, it's not hot to my touch um, or for me to touch it. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually transfer this cooled wort into this fermenting bucket. The one thing that you want to keep track of, though, is that you don't want the sludge that's built up in the bottom of this wort to actually fall into your bucket. So we're going to kind of, it's okay to pour it a little quick, I mean, or not quick, but it's okay to kind of splash it a little bit, pour it into here. Um, but we do want to avoid all of the 
the nasty gunk if there is going to be any. I'm not even sure. I've never done a triple triple chocolate before. It might even just be it might be good. Yeah, I don't even see any sludge. My other one had some sludge in it. Um, this one doesn't appear to have any, which is really cool. Nope, no sludge. Eh, maybe a little bit right there. You can see it got a little chunky. So we're going to stop that. Obviously, we don't want that gunk into our into our mix. Just set that in there. And then at this point, what we're going to do is because this is a five-gallon uh, brew, we actually want to make up the difference between this two and a half gallons to this five gallons. And how we're going to do that is with our bottled water. So we're just going to slowly pour this in. I might actually even have to go to the fridge and get out a little extra water that I've already got that's been through my my purifiers. I don't think I have enough bottled water with me now to actually hit five gallons. And this is also going to further cool our wort. So whatever our wort was at, whether it was 70, it's probably a little closer to 60 degrees now. Um, you can see we're just a little below five gallons. Um, I do have a Brita filter um, that I do use for my standard drinking water. So I will top off the difference with my Brita just to make sure that we're, we're at five gallons. So there we are, about five gallons. And now I'm going to bring this stuff over here. We're actually going to set this right here on top of this lid. This lid is actually sanitized as well. And I'm going to stick this out. So set that on its side. It should be okay. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and cap this. It takes a little bit of pressure to actually snap it down on there. And now that we actually have all of our work and basically ready to make beer, we're going to actually turn this on its side and just slowly rock it. We're doing this to kind of mix, to make sure that all of the wort mixes with the, the water that's actually been added. Even though you'd think adding the water would kind of stir it up, they do recommend doing this. So we're going to follow everybody's instructions and do what we should be doing. Go ahead and keep shaking, shaking, shaking. Now, some of you may be looking at me and saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. Well, you know what, this is how I do it. So. I mean, if it's wrong, I definitely recommend, uh, you know, you, you can certainly give me your advice, but uh, that's how I was kind of taught how to do it, so that's kind of what we're going to do. Um, now that we have it shaken up, we're going to go ahead and uncap this. And you can see down in here, we actually have um, our wort that's um, got a little froth on top. Not a big deal. We're going to take our yeast with our sterilized scissors. And I just usually just cut the corner off. And we're going to take our yeast and we're just going to sprinkle it on top. Just kind of cover the whole top. Whatever you got to do. And that's it. So now our beer is ready to ferment. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and recap it. We want to keep it you know, away from the air as much as possible. Um, we still have our our bubbler, you can see it's still filled with some of the sandy solution. We're going to go ahead and just stick it down into the tip of the bucket. Got it nice and locked in. I have my instructions. This is how I keep track of what beers they are. Um, I put today's date, which is the uh, 12th of January, 2013. Grab a little stick of tape. Tape it to the top. That's it. So now we have beer. It's going to start fermenting. Um, every beer is a little bit different. Some beers require a little bit longer fermentation. Um, this one, as far as the instructions say, it basically says, let's see here. About three to seven days, um, my fermentation will stop. Um, says I should remove the lid, sanitize a hygrometer, and take a gravity reading. Um, and then it looks like we're going to do an additional 7 to 10 days after that. 
So all in all, we're probably looking at about 17, 18 days worth of fermentation. And uh, this stuff should be just about ready to be kegged. So uh, thanks for uh, watching our video. I hope it was informative. I hope you guys got a little something out of this. This is just a, a rookie's uh, attempt at doing some beer. But, you know, hey, if I can do it, you guys can do it. So enjoy that brewing out there. If you guys have any questions, you can always email us at uh, moose at cigarfellas.com. Or just follow us uh, on uh, Stogie Friends, uh, www.stogiefriends.com. We have a great forum going there. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care.